Welcome to this Profinet webinar. Uh, my name is Michael Bown. I'm the Director of Technology Marketing for Profibus Profinet North America. Today we're going to talk about the Profinet of Things. And the world did not begin with field buses, and guess what? It won't end with field buses either. If you think back to the days of uh, just simple pressure, uh, pneumatics were the way to get things done, uh, valves and pneumatics, uh, eventually that evolved into uh, analog signals where you would run a wire from every single sensor and actuator back to its uh, controller um, and that eventually migrated to digital field buses like Profibus DP and like Profibus PA. Finally it evolved into industrial ethernet uh, with Profinet, which is kind of the, the latest generation of all this. But just like it didn't start and end with field buses, the world is not going to start and end with industrial ethernet, and so we have to think about what's next. And these advances from pneumatics to analog to digital to ethernet, they've also followed um, advances in industry with the first industrial revolution of water and steam powered, um, second industrial revolution of mass production, third industrial revolution of ele electronics and IT, and finally today in the fourth industrial revolution we see cyber physical systems where the cyber world also known as the internet and the physical worlds meet. This is a fairly German uh, notion. Uh, this Industry 4.0 is something that's been promoted by the German government. In the U.S. it's really popular to hear about the Internet of Things, which is another uh, way to say the same thing, that it's about connectivity of, of devices, and it's really quite a mess, um, because for a lot of industries like buildings and energy and consumer and healthcare and life sciences and transportation and retail, this is a new thing. It's revolutionary for them, but not for us in an industrial world, and especially in automation, because it's not about the things. For us, it's about the data. And so our little part is uh, down here at the bottom, and um, for that, we have something to kind of explain what we think about what we call the industrial Internet of Things. So if the Internet of Things is not just uh, connected devices in your home, but also connected devices in a commercial setting, whether it's building automation, but also connected devices on the industrial manufacturing floor. It's not the Internet of People, it's the Internet of Things. And you uh, look at what Industry 4.0 talks about, it's not just about connectivity of uh, industrial devices, but also things like work-life balance, um, you know, uh, different people in the workforce, and at the intersection of these two things uh, is what we believe in the industrial Internet of Things. Just to give you an idea of what we're talking about when we say Industry 4.0, the uh, right here is the reference architecture model for Industry 4.0, or RAMI 4.0, and it's uh, quite complicated. It's rather uh, complex, um, but actually when you sit down and look at it, it begins to make some sense, and that's not something that I want to get into, um, but uh, just to let you know that um, Industry 4.0 has a lot of different moving parts to it. And the part that concerns us is here in the middle, and this is what we call the Industrial Internet of Things, where the Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 meet. And in this little part right here, we're showing um, Profinet as supporting the Industrial Internet of Things. Not to be confused with the Internet of Things, um, like I said, that's more of a revolution, whereas for us it's an evolution. It's something we've been doing in industrial automation for a while, and it's it all follows from that concept, right? And there it's about the things, and in, in IIoT it's about the data. In IoT it's about ad hoc, ad hoc connectivity. In IIoT it's about structured connectivity. Um, in IoT things aren't as mission critical and not as important, whereas in IIoT and a manufacturing line things have to be mission critical. There are different service models that have evolved in IIoT where it's not just the user servicing their machines but also the OEM and the vendor. Um, there are existing devices and standards here uh, that we've been using for a long time and these are well defined. I'd like to explain how Profinet supports the industrial Internet of Things and for that we've coined a 
term called the profinet of things. And it's kind of a play on play of words on the Internet of Things theme. And it goes something like this. Uh, to meet the requirements of it being an evolution and lots of data and structured connectivity, Profinet brings a rich uh, data access platform to the table. Um, and data access means three things, performance, profiles, and proxies. And performance, when we talk about performance, we're not talking about, not just about high speed, sub millisecond time scales. Um, since Profinet is an open protocol, you can do that deterministic millisecond, uh, you know, low jitter, real time IO data transfer. At the same time, you can have TCP IP coexisting on the same cable, which means you can have high uh, second time frame uh, acyclic data that's also being transferred. Application profiles are a way to standardize the way data looks, uh, the way it's parameterized and the way it comes into a controller from Profinet devices, makes it easier uh, to set up and configure and for other people to be able to understand what that data means. And proxies are really about this evolutionary step because you'll only ha always have non-industrial ethernet based uh, networks and devices in your manufacturing line. For that we have proxies and proxies are like gateways in that we're bringing in legacy invest investments, uh, legacy field bus data into industrial ethernet networks uh, in a standardized way. The second part of the profinet of things is about uptime. And this is, all gets back to covering that mission critical uh, part of IIoT with robust diagnostics. Uh, this, you know, diagnostics in, in Profinet really are a unique selling point. They're comprehensive. They give you the what, who, where, when, how, and why when there is an unplanned downtime, which we want to minimize as much as possible, which we also do through fault tolerance, whether that means media redundancy, creating a ring shaped network so that if a cable is broken, you still have connectivity whether it's uh, within some redundancy in the circuitry or devices, uh, redundant controllers, whatever the case may be. And the third part of uptime is security. So we've got some guidelines that we've written over uh, many, many years about how to secure networks and what strategies to use because that is a, uh, another way that you know a network could go down is if there's a, a security threat. And finally, the third part of the Profinet of Things is openness. And because we are a nonprofit member supported organization, we believe very strongly in open standards. Now, we do not, you know, want to, want to have a proprietary uh, solution out there um, because we believe that open standards foster innovation and they allow small and medium sized companies to see benefits that everybody else, like big companies, can see because those standards are public and a lot of different vendors make products to those standards which in turn uh, leads to competition and therefore better prices and so on and so forth and it goes back to that that multi-vendor thing that's that's also there under open openness um, that it's not just one big company promoting their proprietary standard if you look at the classic um, information pyramid I guess you could call it at the bottom there's their plant assets uh, in the middle is your manufacturing execution system or your MES system and finally at the top is your ERP uh, system and these interfaces have been defined for a while uh, in this fashion um, quite quite rigidly um, people wanted to say okay this is how you do an ERP MES and and your your field devices and how that data flows but what we're seeing and what a lot of people are talking about is that pyramid going away and it looking more like this uh, this diagram here where it's more of a cake or a, a layers or, or because connectivity is not hierarchical connectivity is going from completely from one layer to to the next whether you talk about bringing information from legacy field buses via uh, Profinet proxies here and bringing that into a wider Profinet network into your controllers at the controller level and then those uh, begin talking to HMI devices, SCADA, MES devices uh, here at the uh, storage and analysis and HMI level. And here, if you want to know where the Profinet of Things fits in, it is, is right down here. This is the Profinet of Things. And it it is a foundation for getting that 
other steps, uh, getting these other parts in the, in the top. The other thing that's new is that connections are being made outside of the normal hierarchy. So now with protocols like OPC UA, you can have an OPC UA server on a very expensive robot or a high-end uh, drive uh, system, and that's communicating directly, sending acyclic data via OPC UA to an OPC UA client somewhere up here in the, could be in the cloud even. And then you have things like FDI, if you have high value instruments, really expensive instrument, instruments, you want to send that information directly to maybe an asset management system. Um, you could do that with uh, FDI. But at the same time, you know, you're not going to want to make multiple connections. Well, with Profinet, we allow those protocols on the same wire um, because it is, it is an, open, an open network. So if you look about, uh, think about where all of this fits, um, you know, you're collecting data in an attempt to analyze it, do something with it, maybe make some business decisions based on uh, actionable data that you then receive and uh, that turns into information. Uh, the last part of that is to, to feed it back into the system. So you want to act on that knowledge. And again, for that, you need um, a, a protocol and network that's flexible, that allows for modular machines and modular plants, and uh, uh, Profinet uh, provides that flexibility. And again, that's that's kind of part of the, the Profinet of things here. I mentioned data and information, and there's always uh, um, sometimes a, a confusion about what those two things are and what they mean. If you see here uh, at the at the far bottom left side of our graph, I guess you could say, at the sub-second time frame, and you have data. This is down here at the I.O. level. So data, zeros, ones, uh, moving around it very quick. As you zoom out on that time scale, you look at that data over a longer time period, that data gets collected in a controller, maybe it's buffered, and it's sent out as information, and for there, that's that's where these protocols like Profinet and like OPC UA fit in. OPC UA has some security built into it where you can then do visualization, analytics uh, up at your IT level, and that's looking at it over the seconds time frame, and it's and it's information. That's how data uh, morphs into into information, if you if you will. So in summary, uh, the Industrial Internet of Things is the next big concept for industry. Uh, Profinet of Things is foundational to the Industrial Internet of Things, which is foundational to IOT and Industry 4.0. And the Profinet of Things is about data access, uptime, and openness. So in summary, uh, for data access, performance, profiles, and proxies, um, Performance provides connectivity at all time scales, in other words, when you need it. Application profiles provide connectivity in a standardized format, data how you need it. And proxies provide connectivity from legacy networks, legacy investments, as in data from where you need it. In summary, the Profinet of Things uh, supports uptime with fault tolerance. Uh, from ring-shaped networks, redundant controllers and devices, and security provides um, comprehensive diagnostics, the what, who, where, when, how, and why of uh, what, what might be happening in a plant. And like I said, security means uh, educate yourself and then take action, whether defense in depth, um, whatever the case may be. And finally, Profinet of Things supports openness. Um, it, the Profibus and Profinet specs are created and maintained by PI, not just one company. PI member companies participate in working groups. They volunteer their time to update and review the, the standards. Uh, membership is not required to, to make products. And finally, there's no contract to sign. Thank you for watching.